want to welcome everyone to the house of the Lord this morning as we come together on this beautiful day that the Lord has given us to worship him and to praise him and celebrate him. We want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning as we begin our service. There are some that are in need of prayer this morning. We know Roger is down under the weather again. He is in desperate need of our prayers. This cold and stuff that he's having won't let go of him and it keeps him keeps coming back on him. We want to continue to remember Kathy uh, Van Buskirk in our prayers that uh, she come through the bypass surgery, but uh, you know, uh, her husband tells me that the recovery period is going to be long and slow. Uh, so we want to continue to remember her and Alan in prayer this morning that the Lord would be with them and help them. Any other needs we have in the house this morning? Praise God. The Lord knows all about our needs, doesn't he? Hallelujah. Lord of heaven, we come to you today. We're so thankful for this great day that you've given us today. And we know that this is a day that you have made, and we can rejoice and be glad in this day. My Lord God of heaven, we come before you today with a, with a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving and a time of praise and worship. Yes. Lord of heaven, we come to you this morning with a time of prayer. Lord of heaven, asking you to meet these needs uh, that we're bringing before you. God, we pray especially for Roger today that you would touch his body. God, remember Kathy and Alan and help them today. You saw the hands that were raised for the needs that are represented there. My Lord, you see every, every name on our prayer list. And Lord, you know all about every situation and every circumstance. And we give these to you today by faith. We lay these in your hands, Lord God, because we know that you're more than able to meet every need. Oh, God of heaven, help these families today in Israel that are suffering, oh God, because of the they onslaught of evil that's coming against the nation of Israel. My Lord God, we pray for protection. We pray for might and we pray for power as she battles the onslaught of evil that's trying to destroy her. My Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We honor you and I thank you in advance for what you're going to do in this place this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes amen. amen. Yes, amen.
I love the words of this song. It says, keep me falling on my knees in need of mercy. Because I'm going to tell you, we need the mercy of God every day. We need the grace of God every day. We would be in such trouble without it. And I'm so thankful that it's new, that it's fresh every morning. But that doesn't resolve us from the place of, of having to do what the song says, of getting on our face before him every day. He said, Lord, I need your mercy today. On our knees today, he said, Lord, I need your mercy. I need your grace. I need your love to help me as I start this day today. Hallelujah. Sing with us this morning. that endures forever. Something I want to share with you this morning if the Lord has laid upon my heart. You know, the prophet Jeremiah speaks about the word being like a fire that gets shut up in your bones. Yes. And you just can't speak enough about it. And that's the way I stand before you this morning as I try to stand before you every time I come to you, whether it's on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night or any other time we may be together with the fire of the Lord shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I was reminded of a, as I started reading a new book this week by Perry Stone, very interesting talking about the artificial intelligence, AI, that is going around, and we're hearing a lot about it, yeah. versus God. Good book. Get a chance, grab you one, and read it. You'll, you'll find it very interesting. But I, was, I find it very interesting because before I had ever started reading the book, matter of fact, it was on its way to me. I didn't even have it yet when the Lord laid this message on my heart gave me this for you. See, a few years ago, they came out with what the military first came out with it, and, then, and, and a discovery, and they called it the Global Positioning System, or GPS for short. It's a complex system made up of multiple satellites, and uh, and, and, and these satellites are strategically located and placed throughout uh, the, the upper atmosphere above the earth. And then there are transmitters that and receivers that transmit a signal to this satellite or to the various satellites and they receive a signal back. And it happens so quickly. And in this communication taking place, they can give you your location. They can, they can make a, they have made a map obsolete to where we no longer need road maps. We just have the GPS to guide us down the highway. You know, they, there's a lot of great things about this technology that has crept into our world. As I look around this morning, for the most part, I and comfortable enough to say what I'm about to say, that every one of us have a cell phone. And through 
that cell phone through GPS technology, you're never lost. There is a capability of somebody knowing where you are 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes. Now, I love technology. I'm not anti-technology, so don't get the wrong idea. You know, I, I think this, this, this technology is very fascinating. You know, it's so fascinating that, that we have gotten so accustomed to it is, is that the, most of the new cars you buy today have the GPS technology already built in. Where at one time it was an option, now it's almost standard on every car. We look and we see how, that, like you say, we have them in our phones. And, and, and we have them, we have them. I have one of the, uh, on my boat and my fish finder has GPS technology where I can get to a place, or Jackie and I can get to a place where we are, we're catching a few fish and, and we want to remember that spot. And I can just push a little button and mark me a waypoint. And the next time we go to that lake, all I've got to do is just go to the map and, 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 and call that waypoint up and the GPS will take me right back to that same exact spot. Farmers, Brother Leon and I have talked about this, uh, how the, the, the agriculture industry today are, are, are really involved in GPS technology. And even in the excavating business, there's a lot of GPS technology and things in there. And, you know, man thinks they're clever and man thinks they're wise with, uh, with, with all the this that they're doing and all the advancements and all the technology. And it's really, if you begin to read up on some of this, a lot of these things, people have a heart and a mindset that they think they're equal or superior to God. But, you know, I'm reminded what the Word says, professing themselves wise, they become fools. Because how many know that there's places GPS don't work? Hello? There's places that are known as dead spots where they don't pick up, they don't send and receive the signal. There's things that interference gets in the way. Sometimes weather interferes with them. And, and to be totally honest with you, as my wife and I have found out, sometimes they can be just dead wrong. Yep. Hello? Amen. That little voice that speaks to you, uh -huh. she don't know what she's talking about sometimes. <laughs> I remember a few years ago, we were headed to, to, to Tishner, Arkansas. And Tishner, Arkansas is about as far as you can get before you run smack dab into the Mississippi River. You cross the Arkansas to get there. And as we were headed there, I had the GPS set, to, and all of a sudden it said, turn here. So we turned here. And it had been a number of years since I had been that way down this particular road we were on. So I said, okay, maybe things have changed. And, and, and we took this and we began, and we went down every country back road and pig path <laughs> and trail that you can imagine. And just about the time we thought we were thoroughly lost, for one hour, we was we was going down all these roads and, and this thing getting following the directions of the GPS. Finally, there was a car that came in the other direction, and Jackie got over in the middle of the road to stop him. <laughs> he rolled the window down and said, could you tell me where we're at and where to find the highway? Where are you trying to go? Tister, oh, you just go right up here, take a right, hit the ground, and hit the asphalt, take a right, and then you're on your way. That's what I'm saying. Technology can be wrong. But I'm telling you, as wise as man is, they're not as wise as God. Amen. Because, see, God, the psalmist reminds us that he has had a GPS technology long before man ever dreamed of it. Amen. The Word of God says in Psalms 34 and 15 that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. Yeah. Can I tell you this morning, child of God, God knows exactly where you're at. You're never lost. There is no dead spaces. There are no dead zones. And can I tell you with his GPS technology that if we will follow his voice and follow his word, he'll always keep you on the right trail. He'll always keep you on the right path. And he'll always get you there and safe and sound every time. Yes. Praise God. Can I tell you, not only will 
Uh, does his eyes on us? Can I tell you that God's ear is open to the cry of your voice? We just sang this song uh, here about in the midnight hour when we're crying out to the Lord in the midnight hour. My friend, let me tell you, I don't care whether it's a noontime or a midnight. He hears the every time you speak his name. I don't care whether you're driving down the highway in your bedroom, kneeling beside your bed, whether you're in the house of God, wherever you are, when you call upon Upon him, his ears are always open to hear the cry okay. of your voice. Yes. God's GPS never fails. It never shuts off. The battery never runs dry. I'm here to tell you this morning, God knows you more than you realize. There's a word that has been burning in my heart all week since I began praying and asking God to move in this service this morning and what his will for this service this morning would be. And four words just keep thundering in my spirit. He said, tell my people, I know thy works. I know thy works. I'm going to tell you something. These four, these, these four words are found multiple times in the New Testament. Seven times they're mentioned in the book of Revelation in chapters 2 and 3 alone. And I'm going to tell you something. God, when, 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 the, when the Word of God says something one time, it, it is worth paying attention to. When it says something two times, you really need to pay attention to it. But when it says something seven times, the Lord wants to get your attention and he wants to make, make you understand what he's saying. And can I tell you this morning, the Lord wants you to understand, I know your works. Yes. See, in Revelation chapter 2, we get to verse 2, and I just want to look at the highlighted portion of this bit scripture this morning. As he says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. Can I tell you this morning, child of God, we are living in a very trying time. We are battling spirits daily that are opposed. There, there is an antichrist spirit that is alive and well and, 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 and attacking the child of God who's trying to live by faith this morning. And there are some under the sound of my voice, whether you're in this sanctuary or whether you will be with us in virtual church uh, after a while when we download this uh, to the internet. Uh, can I tell you that you become weary in well-doing? Uh, you, have, you, have, you have tried, and it seems like uh, you're not getting anywhere. You, you, you take one step forward and then two steps back. Uh, can I tell you this morning how that, 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 that you see that have spoken the words to the effect of I have been trying my best to live for God. I've been doing everything I know to do and things just don't seem to work. Things aren't seeming to get any better. Things aren't seeming to happen. There may be a particular thing that you've been praying for and you can't see it taking shape and you become discouraged and you become disgruntled and the, 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 the enemy of your soul is in your weakness and he's telling you to go ahead and just give up and give up and throw in the towel and turn your back and go back to living the way you've always lived because he has he's not heard your cry he's not answered your prayer my friend let me tell you this morning the devil's a liar amen the devil's a liar yes he is your heavenly father said this morning to let you know to not be weary in well doing for in due season you hear these words, in due season, in God's season, in God's time, this thing you've been praying for will come to pass. Hello? You're not, you're not shouting as good as I'm preaching this morning. I said this thing that you've been praying for, this thing that you've been longing for, this thing has been on your heart, in God's time. Yes. But it requires faith. Yes. It requires perseverance. Yes. Don't give up. 
Oh, I don't have time this morning to go through the whole yes. the whole list of things this morning. But you remember somebody like Noah. Oh, we, we've been talking a little bit about Noah lately. You remember how for 120 years Noah worked to build the ark, expecting any day now to see a raindrop fall, expecting to see something happen that, that, that he knew was going to happen. He just didn't know all the particulars about it, but he lived every day of his life looking up at the sky and said, well, I wonder if this is going to be the day. But after 120 years, it would have been easy for Noah to got discouraged. It would have been easy for him to got disgruntled. It would have been easy for him to say, I quit and I give up. But I want to tell you something just as God promised. There was that day when Noah did everything God by faith. When he walked by faith and he built by faith and he did everything that God told him to do by faith. There come that day, my friend, where the Bible tells us that that first raindrop fell to the ground. And after that raindrop came another one. And after that raindrop came another one. Something that had never happened before began to happen because God had said, my friend, let me tell you, remember Sarah and how the, and, and, and how the her and Abraham had to walk by faith for 25 years. They waited on the promise of God. Don't panic this morning. I'm not saying you have to wait 25 years to have your prayer answered. But what I'm telling you, the God that yes. promised it to you yes. is the God that will give it to yes. you. Thank yes. Lord. Yes. Don't give up. Yes. Don't get discouraged. Oh, I want to tell you this morning, the word of God tells you that you have may sow in tears, but you will reap in joy. Yes. Hear me. You may, it may be sorrowful. And sometimes it may be disappointing. And sometimes it may look like it is impossible. And you may sow in tears. But the word of God has promised you that you will reap in joy. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Raise your hand this morning yes. and give him thanks. Thank Lord, I thank you right yes. now for hearing and answering yes. my prayer. Yes. I thank you for Hallelujah. saving that soul. I thank you yes. for delivering that loved one. I thank yes. you for the miracle that I'm expecting. I thank you for this thing that I've been praying about. Because I know, according to your word, yes. it's going to come to pass. Yes, Thank you, Lord. The prophet Hosea tells us to keep on sowing yes. in the righteousness. Yes. Keep on doing the right thing. Keep on doing the God things. He said, and you'll reap in mercy. Then he says something here that's very important. He tells us to break up your fallow ground. Yes. Now see, for years I read this and I always thought, Brother Leon, when he's talking about fallow ground, he's talking about new ground. Ground that had never been broken. I always thought that's what that meant. Until the Holy Ghost drew my attention one day to do some research and do some looking. That's not what it means at all. See, the fallow ground was ground that at one time had been tilled. At one time, it had been cultivated. At one time, it had been planted. At one time, it, bore, it, it, it produced a crop. But for some reason, it was let lay by. Somebody quit tilling it. Somebody quit plowing it. Somebody quit fertilizing it. Somebody quit sowing seed into it. And I tell you, the weeds and the vines and the shrubs and the bushes and the trees and all the other things took it over again. What are you driving at, Pastor? The Holy Spirit is saying this morning, there's some things you need to break up some fallow ground. There's some areas of your life that you've quit sowing into. There's some areas of your life that you've quit tilling. There's some areas of your life that some things that you've gotten away from. And I will tell you something. It's turning into fallow ground. And God cannot produce a harvest in fallow ground. But can I tell you this morning, if you'll get back to your prayer time. Oh, hear me this morning. If you yes. get back to your prayer time where you shut yourself off from everything and everyone else. And I know we get busy. And my family, 
let me tell you, it's easy to get so busy that we, that, that we just think we don't have time to pray. But you better make time to pray and get along with God in prayer and break up that fallow ground. Because I want to tell you, it's through prayer that not only he speak, we speak to him, but it's through prayer that he speaks to us. Amen. Yes. When you get back to the fallow ground of getting back in the word, Reading the word, let the word speak to us, let the word be a part of our life. Oh, I want to tell you something, my friend. We're, the greatest thing that God has given humanity, second only to our salvation, is the word of God. Yes, and we need to cherish it, we need yes. to love it, we need to, to respect it, and it needs to be a part of our life. Oh, I know sometimes we don't like to hear what it's got to say, but I want to tell you, even in those times where we don't like to hear what it's got to say. God's trying to do something for our good. Yes. Amen. Through his word. Yes. yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Get back in church. Yes. Some of that are on virtual church this morning. You could have been here. The Holy Ghost took at your heart. You should have been here. Can I tell you something? Assembling yourself together in the house of God is scriptural. Yes. And it's amen. needful. Yes. You need the church and the church needs you. Amen. You need the fellowship of the church. You need the, 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 the fellowship of believers. And the church needs you to yes. do what God has called us to do in this community. Yes. Amen. And these things work together. And there's some other things that may be there. Oh, there may be some other things. That, 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 that There may be some things that you may have to lay aside that you picked up. There may be some things, that, 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 that some old habits and some old ways that you've gotten away from and you laid them aside. But you left your relationship because you quit praying and you quit reading and, and kind of quit going to church like you used to. Some things you picked up. My friend, let me tell you, it's time to lay them aside. It's time to let everything aside that would into your relationship with the Lord Jesus yes, Christ. Amen. He wants to do a work in you and he wants yes. to do a work through you. Yes. It's time to break up some fallow ground. Yes. Time to break up some fallow ground. Yes. So that the Lord can <coughs> give you a bountiful harvest. So the Holy Spirit told me and said to remind them what I tell them in 1 Corinthians 15, how that you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Can I tell you, my friend, there's nothing you can do for the Lord that he is not aware of. Amen. There's nothing you can do for the Lord. Oh, you know, the Bible tells us that even your, your prayers are stored up in vials in heaven. Not only does he hear your prayer, not only does he answer your prayer, he stores your prayers. They're precious to him. Yes. There's nothing you can do in the name of the Lord. You can do for the Lord, for his church, for his work that he's not aware of. And it's not in vain. You're not spinning your wheels. You're not wasting your time. My friend, let me tell you, there is a season of sowing. And then there is a season to reap. Yes. And you are Hallelujah. about to Thank come you, into your reaping season you, if you don't give up. Amen. Yes. He goes Hallelujah. on to tell you in Revelation 2 and 9, I know your works, your tribulation, your poverty, but thou art rich. So we're living in a time of tribulation. We're not in the great tribulation yet. But we're, tribulation is just a fancy word for trouble. And how many know that every one of us have troubles? Yes, amen. And sometimes we live, and, and, and I'm not going to tell you that because you're a Christian, you've got more troubles than your neighbor, but I'm not going to tell you that you'll have less either. But I'm going to tell you that as a child of God, when you go through this life and you're facing trials and you're facing tests, and you're facing troubles, God, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. What are you talking about? I'm talking about he can take your mess and make a blessing out of it. Yes. Hello? Yes. God has a way of taking our troubles 
and our tribulations and our problems and, yeah. and all these things that, that we and he has a way of turning them around and making a blessing out of them turning them around and making something good out of them turn them around and instead of the, and, and, and instead of it being a heartbreak my friend let me tell you something that we can shout and praise and give him praise for yes, us. Amen. he knows the trouble yes he does Everyone. he knows this morning that in your spirit you feel drained and you see, none of us can like going through these things. But can I tell you that sometimes one of the ways that God speaks to us, and we talked about this a little bit Wednesday night in our Bible study, one of the ways God speaks to us sometimes is in our troubles. Yes. Hello? Yes. When we get ourselves in a situation where our back's against the wall, then we're willing to listen to him. Hello? Amen. He's tried to speak to us. He's tried to talk to us. He's tried his best to get our attention. And we've ignored him nine ways to Sunday. And sometimes he loves us so much and he wants to do so much for us, he has no other choice but to allow us to work ourselves into a place where our back is against the wall. And we can't do anything else but look up. Because he knows that and can I tell you something? When we look up to him, he's always there to respond. He'll never turn his back on you, even in the midst of your troubles. He's always there. I'm reminded of the words of Jesus. How in John's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 21, he talked about a woman about to give birth. And how the in the, 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 in the time of her birth, and as she was about to give birth, the birthing pains come on, the contractions come on. And you ladies that have have born children, you know firsthand what I'm speaking of here. How that when, uh, just before you give birth, the contractions come so close, and the pain comes so sharp that that one contraction doesn't stop before another one starts. Uh, and the pain is much greater with this one than what it was with the last one. And, uh, and it's, it's a time of sorrow. But Jesus said, when that baby is born, he said that I didn't. When a child is born, it brings such a joy and such a pleasure that you mamas forgot all about that heartache and pain, did you? You didn't remember that, did you? All you could remember was the love that you had for that baby that you held in your arms. Amen. I said that to say this. Some of you are about to give birth. Child of God, this morning, these trials and these tribulations and these tests that you have gone through, and it seemed like they're one right after the other, right after the other. My friend, let me tell you something. The Lord is positioning you. He is positioning you to where he can do a work in you and through you that you are about to give birth to a blessing from God. Hear me this morning. He wants to birth something in you. Don't give up. He talked about being poor and how that we were poor. We think we're poor, but we're actually rich. And I was reminded of the words of Jesus as he says, those are poor in spirit. Ours is the kingdom of heaven. Oh, my Lord, do you realize that we have all of heaven at our disposal? Yes. Everything that belongs to God, we have at our disposal as children of God. But it was but when we're poor in spirit. What are we talking about being poor in spirit? We're in a place to be poor in spirit is when we lose out to self and we become consciously aware of our dependency and our need for God. Hear me. We are living in a world today filled with pride. Hear me. My talent is enough. I've got an education. I've got a degree. I've got experience. I've got enough. I'm gifted. I'm, I'm, I'm charismatic. And we try to go through life doing things on our own talents, on our own abilities, on our own gifts, 
doing things our own way. But my friend, let me tell you, and that's one of the reasons why we struggle and we bumble and we fumble and we find ourselves facing the same old problems day in and day out that won't go away. But when we get poor in spirit, when we get to the place where we bankrupt our pride, where we bankrupt our, our ego, where we bankrupt ourselves and say, Lord, I need you. Yes. My education isn't enough. My talent isn't enough. My charm isn't enough. My charisma isn't enough. I don't have my, my family heritage isn't enough. These things that I have in my life that I'm grateful for, they're not enough. Lord, I need you. I need you. Lord, I surrender myself to you. I give myself over to you. Hear me, friend. Oh, these, this mentality has been has been promoted so much in our culture that we where we, 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 we get to where we think we're we're somebody and we don't need God and then sometimes that's why we don't see God move in our lives like we want to see God move child of God hear me this morning it's time when we need to humble ourselves before the hand of God yes. Amen. we need to become dependent on God yes. Yes. can I tell yes. you there was a time in our history where our forefathers walked in faith and they saw the miracles of God take place because they depended on God for the miraculous. Yes. Hello? Amen. I know of people personally that had to literally pray their next meal was coming from. And God always provided. Yes. Amen. I know of people that had to pray for health issues and God provided. I know of people that have had to pray for jobs. They've had to pray for things. They've had to pray for needs. And God always provides. Yes, he did. But I will tell you today, we live in a prideful, arrogant world to where there is a push. Uh, it's an underlying current, and it's something that Antichrist spirit that has been very subtle and very cleverly disguised, and that, that we have allowed such pride to fill our hearts that where we don't need God and we don't want to do things God's way. And we wonder sometimes why things are in the mess that they're in. My friend, let me tell you this morning, and I say this with love. We need to repent. Yes. We need to fall on our face before God yes. and bankrupt ourselves. Say, God, I'm not worthy. Yes. I'm not able. I, 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 yeah, I have some knowledge of some things, but my knowledge is nothing. My knowledge is nothing. I don't. I need your knowledge. I need yes. your wisdom. I need your guidance. Yes. I need your counsel. Yes. Lord, as you speak, I will listen and follow you. See, God resists the proud, yes, he does. but he gives grace to the humble. And it's time that we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, that he can lift us up. Yes, amen. Some here this morning, the sound of my voice, the Lord just reminds me through Revelation chapter 2, verse 13, to tell you, he said, I know your works, where you dwell, even where Satan's seed is. You have found yourself in a very ungodly, unholy surrounding. Your job, you're, it's a place that's filled with violence, profanity, evil, wickedness at every hand. And so many times, people, I faced this, I fought this for years. Hear me, I know what I'm saying. I fought this for years. Wanted to get away, wanted to get away, wanted to get away. Until one day the Holy Spirit just got a hold of me and said, I've placed you here for a reason. In the midst of these people that are dealing drugs, in the midst of the people of these people, that, that are lost and undone. 
in the midst of all the profanity, in the midst of all the ungodliness, in the midst of all the, un the unholy activity that's taking place in the lives of these people, I've placed you here for a reason, that you are to be a light and you are to be a witness unto them. And I want to tell you something. God used me, and I'm not bragging on Ricky, you understand what I'm saying. But God used me to talk to drug dealers about Jesus. God used me to talk to those who are substance abusers about Jesus. I walk on that property today, and those that still that are there, that knew me when I worked there, the first work, hey, Rev, how you doing? Because they knew who I was. Because the Lord was able to use me. Yes, hallelujah. The Lord has That's you true. where you are to use you for his glory. Yes, amen. Yes. See, Sister Jean back there, and I'm not trying to embarrass Sister Jean, with what I'm going to say, but God has placed her in that classroom with them babies. Yes. God has placed her in a classroom with children every day that she is able to let the love of Jesus Christ shine through her and speak through her to put some things in them in her classroom that many of them will not get in their homes. Amen. Amen. Hello? Yes. Many of them will not get them in their homes. But in that classroom, they could hear about Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Brother Steve has a perfect opportunity in his in his business. He sees he sees John Q. Public that we'll never see. And Brother Steve had with his personality and his charm and and he and him being he, who he is, he's got a way about it. He can talk to people. Yes. And sometimes they're not in there because things are going good in their life. They're in there because Things aren't going that well, and they need to. They need. They need to make some adjustments on some things. Brother Steve's there to help them out with his business, but at the same time, he can point them to Jesus. Yes. Amen. And talk to them about Jesus. Yes. I want to tell you something. God has placed us strategically in the place where we're at to be used for Him, for His glory, yes. and for His honor. Brother Danny's around a lot of a lot of people in his line of work. And I know he shares the gospel with them. Yes. We've talked about this. Some of you, I look at I look at the truck stop crowd this morning. <laughs> and I know I know the environment that you're in because I, I spent a little time there sitting around the table drinking coffee with you. And I want to tell you something. You are in a perfect place yes. for the Spirit of God yes. to use yes. you to share Jesus Christ yes, with amen. people that need it the most. Yes, amen. See, he knows where you're at. He knows where you're at. You, 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 his GPS is working. And not only is it working, he has, got, he has guided your footsteps through this place for his purpose, yes. for his reason. We, we here a few weeks ago, we had a candlelight service for our first, for, for, for our first service of the year. And we come up to here and we, we had the candle and you know, you were here, you remember how that we, we lit the candle, off, our candle off of the other candle that was here. And there was a song that was playing, go light your candle. Let your light shine to this world. Yes. And I will tell you something the Lord tell me this morning. Yes. Thank you are the light. You are the salt. You are the only Jesus that some people will ever see and hear and know. Hear me. The only way they know Jesus is through you. The only way they see Jesus is through you. The only way they hear Jesus is through you. You are the only Jesus that they know. 
I want to tell you this morning, he knows where you're at. He knows where you're at. He says before you this morning that if we would trust in him with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding, quit trying to figure it out on your own, just trust in him and lay it in his hands yes. that he will direct your path. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He tells you this morning that he has set before you an open door <coughs> that no man can shut. Oh, they might outlaw Christianity to the place to where you can't say anything about, about Jesus in public. They're, they're working toward that real quick. But can I tell you that when you're living a life of godliness and you're living a life of holiness and you've got that relationship with the Lord, your life, there's going to be a holy glow about you that they can't extinguish and they can't put out. Amen. That will be a witness and a testimony into the darkness of this world. I set before you an open door that no man can shut it. And hear me this morning. Walk through it. Let him use you. Jesus talked about the church. <coughs> church is not just building or any other building for that matter. The church, you and I, with the assembly, were the called out ones. I want to remind you, you didn't choose him, he chose you. Yes. Hear me. Yes. He chose you. He handpicked you. When you were lost and undone and in sin and trespasses away from God, God chose you and he sent the Holy Spirit to prick your heart and let you know you needed a Savior. And once you come to him and you and you and, and you repent and give your life to him, he chose you and he began to pour himself into you and he began to do a work of, 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 of changing your life and turn your life around. You are a chosen vessel unto him. That he wants your his spirit to flow through you. He said he would build his church. He's building his church. Has been for 2,000 years, and he hasn't let up. He's not going to quit. As we bombard the gates of hell in our communities, which is exactly what we're doing, we're bombarding the strongholds of hell. Yes. The gates of hell will never prevail against the church. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I want to remind you this morning that he encourages you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Cover your thoughts and your head with the righteousness of God. My God, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Oh, my God, right living and Holy living. Gird your loins with the truth of God's word and the holiness of God. My friend, let me tell you, put your shoes on the world. I'm going to take Jesus with me everywhere I go. <coughs> Pick up the sword of the spirit and the, and the shield of faith and go out into the highways and byways and hedges and tell this world that they need Jesus yes. Christ. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Yes. Hallelujah. See, in God's GPS this morning, he brought you to this place. He brought you here. If he directed your footsteps, he directed your path. He's spoken to you today. I want you to know he has more for you if you're willing to be obedient and humble before him and hear his voice. Yes, amen. Every head bowed this morning. Yes. Every eye closed on this morning. Yes. I know you've been under attack by the enemy. I know there's been things going on because that's just the world we're in today. But I'm here to tell you the Lord loves you. I'm here to tell you that he has something great for you. 
I have not seen, neither ear heard, neither is entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for them that love him. Oh, you, well, well that pastor, that's in heaven, yes. Oh, my, 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 I, I don't have time to get talking about how wonderful it's going to be when we get over there. But I want to tell you something. God has the same for you here. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The enemy has been trying to get you to back up, to give up, to quit. You've been bombarded with circumstances and situations. And What's the use? This morning, I'm going to tell you, we want to come, we want to pray. Because we humble ourselves before the Lord. Lord, I give this situation to you. Lord, I've tried to carry it long enough. I give it to you. There's somebody in this place this morning. You're struggling with something right now. It's bigger than you. And you're trying to do it in your own way, under your own power, your own strength. And it's wearing you down. But if you'll come this morning and give it to the Lord, let him take it. Let him handle it. Submit yourself unto him and his way. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. Let him direct you. Within a very short time, you'll see results. You'll see results. I want everyone that will this morning to come. Let's come for prayer. Let's come spend a few moments in the presence of the Lord. Let's come and give Him ourselves. Empty. Lord, I empty myself out before you. I empty myself out before you. Lord, I stand before you this morning and I surrender everything to you. I give it to you. Will you come? Will you come? Will you bring your needs to the Lord this morning? Will you bring your cares to the Lord this morning? Will you bring yourself to the Lord this morning? The Lord of heaven, we need you. We need you. Holy Lord God. Others need to come. Others need to come. He's tugging at your heart. He's speaking to you right now. Are you willing to listen? Are you willing to do it God's way?
take over the steering wheel of your life. Allow him to guide and direct your path. I want to tell you firsthand, you'll never be sorry that you did. Because he's got so much better for you. So much better for you. When you do it his way. Hallelujah. Hear you this morning. The Lord knows your works. I want to remind you of our Wednesday night Bible study. I had a great Wednesday night study this past week, and we're looking forward to the one we're having this coming week. Chapter 8. I want you to look at it, be reading over it, be ready Wednesday night to come, and let's share together. Let's remember the, the 11th of February is our uh, potluck that we'll be having after the service that morning. And we'll be having a potluck fellowship and, and be, like we did the last time and had a great time. So we want to remind you of that. Start making plans to be here and bring family with you. We, we want people to be here that we can mix and mingle with and, and break bread with and let them know that we'll love them so many different ways they're bound to like something. And so we want to be there. Remember these that we've been praying for. Remember one another. Look around this morning and see some that aren't here. Maybe a few that are here. We know some that are sick. Be sure and pray for them. But reach out to them. A phone call or a visit or a card or something. Just to let them know that we miss them and we love them. We want to send them back in the house of God. Let's stand to our feet this morning and be just with Brother Daniel, you just miss this place. Dear Heavenly Father.